Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo, and we are here today to talk a little bit about Dirty Bomb. I figured I'd return to Dirty Bomb for the first time in, man, years, I think? The last time I actively was playing this game was when it was in alpha. I got into, like, closed testing, and I was playing it really early on. And I think when they lifted the NDA, I made some content for it. I could probably pull an old video out of a rabbit's hat at some point. But I didn't end up playing too much of it after that point. The game was still growing. I don't think during the time that I was testing it, it ever really found its footing. It didn't really fully knew what it was. I was just happy to be playing a game by Splash Damage, because they're a developer that I've, you know, played their games for decades. Uh, Enemy Territory, Enemy Territory Quake Wars eventually, uh, you know, Brink, which came and went very quickly, but still had a lot of cool ideas. And now Dirty Bomb, which I always felt was sort of the extension of Brink. Sort of a redefining, if they did Brink in a different way, what would it be like? And I always figured Dirty Bomb would be that game. Now, with the massive Javelin update, I figured it was time to come back and see what the game had to offer. I actually played it a couple months ago, and I was really unhappy with, like, where the matchmaking system was. And it was, like, all server browsers, and it was really hard to get into, like, a room. And, you know, server browsers are great when you want to play with, like, a certain group of friends again and again when you're way into the game, you're way committed to the community. But when you just want a quick match, you want to be matched up against people of relatively the same skill, right? As best as you possibly can be anyways. So if you're just jumping into server browsers, you're probably going to get slaughtered by people who really know what they're doing. Or potentially you end up maybe doing well, but there's other people who are getting slaughtered. It's just, it's this really big back and forth. So one of the biggest things with the Javelin update is that they did indeed update their matchmaking. You now have casual matchmaking, ranked matchmaking... The time limit on it, like the amount of time it takes to find a match, isn't the greatest. I saw anywhere from two to five minutes was the longest amount. So not end of the world bad, but considering I think the number of players that this game has regularly, you probably won't be seeing anything quicker than like two minutes. You know, you might get like one minute, maybe if you're playing during peak hours, it'll be a little bit better. So expect varying matchmaking times. But nonetheless, I think it's great to have it. And in my opinion, the length of a match being anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes or 20 to 25 minutes in ranked means that I'm well okay with spending, you know, two to five minutes on matchmaking if it means that the experience that I get once I'm in the match is better than it would have been otherwise. And I can say in the four matches that I played today, it felt drastically better. I was actually going up against people who were close to my relative skill uh, while I did win most of the matches I played because I think the people on the other team didn't have particularly good aim compared to mine which my aim isn't amazing or anything. They just were really, really bad. Um, you know, we were able to win a lot of matches, but it, it felt closer. There was some push and pull. I think we did actually lose one match uh, in the matches that I played. So it, again, the matchmaking felt like it was doing its job and that's the most important thing. Now there's a whole other slew of like weapon fixes and they've made big changes to all of the different weapon platforms. They've changed the pricing of hero, of mercs, I should say, because this is a free to play shooter. Probably one of the best ones in the market, in my opinion. Um, but that's all stuff that I really can't comment on having not played it very long. I really just wanted to talk about how Dirty Bomb felt after years of me not playing it and really, I guess, give you guys some personal impressions on the game. It's it's one of those games that I see that I know is doing well, that always gets positive reviews, and, you know, having played it before the update and still enjoyed it and playing it now with the update, I felt like it was just my duty to let you guys know that the game's pretty kick-ass. It's probably one of, if not the best, free-to-play, you know, team-focused, class-based, objective-focused shooters on the PC right now. I, re I don't really think anything comes close in the free-to-play market. Like, it is really just a good experience. I think it's more relevant than a lot of the games. And you know what? It's, again, built by a developer who has a long lineage, uh, a, a, you know, a pretty substantial history of making really good objective-based, class-based shooters. And in a lot of ways, when we look at the history of Splash Damage, we look at games like Enemy Territory and Brink, you know, they all followed that hardcore objective-focused gameplay, the same objective-focused gameplay that we see inside of Dirty Bomb that we see in a game like Overwatch, in a game like Lawbreakers, you know. Objective-based gameplay and class-based elements have been around for a long time. Enemy Territory was, I think, one of the first games to do them to great success. I mean, that game was hugely popular. It was the first PC game that I played addictively that had an extensive modding community. And, you know, again, it followed a lot of these same objective-based modes where you're, like, pushing and there's multi-stage objectives, essentially. You push, destroy a wall with a bomb or defend the bomb from getting planted. And then you gotta like, you know, escort a tank, and then you gotta escort some stuff and get it, you know, airdropped out. You know, that's the Dirty Bomb experience, and that is something that Splash Damage has been doing for a very long time. 
Now, the Mercs, at the end of the day, while a lot of people would draw comparisons to hero shooters like Overwatch, are really just an evolution of the class-based shooter. I mean, when you really think about it, hero shooters and class-based shooters are very, very similar. The big thing with a hero shooter, a game like Overwatch, and you could say even Dirty Bomb with its Merc system now, is that they tend to drastically increase the number of those classes that you have uh, because they can do a lot more in terms of nuance. And of course, all of these classes now become actual characters. They're injected with their own personality. Sometimes they only have their own backstory. You know, they're voice characters. They're animated in their own special way. They're different people, they're different human beings, so on and so forth. But when you look at a game like Enemy Territory way back then, yeah, you had like five or six different classes. You could play the Mortar Roll, and he had his own set of tiered weapons he could unlock. You could play the Engineer to take down the bridges so your tank could drive across or to repair your tank. You know, again, hero shooters are just, they're the modern evolution of a class-based shooter in a lot of ways. And nowadays, developers just put more assets and more horsepower into making more of those classes and making it a big driving force for replayability, a reason for you to come back. That's something that I think Dirty Bomb is also doing really well. I can't say I'm particularly happy with all of the mercs. I think Javelin in particular that just got released, and I think, is it Jackhammer, are both banned from ranked play. I don't know if they, like, ban them because they're a new hero, uh, or if they just ban them because they don't think they're fair. I would say that Javelin feels kind of not fair. <laughs> like, having this rocket launcher that you can sort of guide and blast at people, right? There's a few things in the game that feel a bit over the boundary in terms of what's like fair competitive play but none of it was ever a consistent problem in my time with the game uh when i played it a couple months ago and when i played it today so that's something i can just put out of the way but i do actually like the game's aesthetic its visual styling you know it is sort of like in london you know it's got that sort of setting all the characters talk that way very similar to a lot of the accents that you saw with brink as well which is interesting the game also has a bit of a movement system that is kind of like stolen from Brink. It's not as advanced hardcore parkour as Brink was. You don't have the different, obviously, like the, the body types that can give you different parkour skills. But you can wall jump in this game, which was something that they weren't doing when I played way in early alpha. I don't know when that came into, into Dirty Bomb, but I think it's really cool. And I think it's one of those advanced movement things that allows you to access certain ledges and certain routes that give you better sniping opportunities or better ways to push the enemy. And it is sort of a high skill play thing. And I think that's really neat. The biggest thing, of course, though, like moving aside from the variety that we have for the mercs and you know, the different guns, the cards, essentially, that you can unlock for the different mercs is the gunplay, which I think is just bang on. Like, I like more skill based first person shooters when I play on PC. You know, that's where I look for my counter strikes and my my lawbreakers now and, you know, like Unreal tournaments and stuff like that in Dirty Bomb has that same distinct snappy crisp feel that I remember from anime territory like over 10 years ago. Just feels good to snap a headshot onto somebody and to track with that little SMG. You know, there's a good amount of recoil to the weapons. It definitely isn't Counter-Strike in terms of like the necessity for you to develop individual profici proficiency with individual weapons, is that what I should say? But, you know, it, it feels accessible and it feels challenging on the long term at the same time. Like, again, the reason you see me doing really well in a lot of the matches I'm playing right now with the, with the, with the class, the sorry, the casual matchmaking, is that most of these people were coming to the game for the very first time since the update. It's definitely drawn in new players, and somebody who plays a bit more PC shooters, me, who was able to kind of just, you know, clean them up a little bit uh, more effectively. But I've played against much better players, and that's when you kind of, you know, you kind of get put in your place. It's, it's not an easy game to play. You can do well. You know, headshots obviously are valued. It just has a really good core gunplay uh, feel to it. The core gameplay loop, everything surrounding the gunplay just definitely feels really kick-ass. Now, one of the things that, again, boosts the replayability of the game, the diversity that you can expect from Dirty Bomb outside of the Mercs, is that they all have their own loadout cards, which can be unlocked. So, the game is free to play, as I mentioned. It is not pay to win in the way that most of the weapons and the cards are pretty well balanced. Like, you can't really just get a card that feels god tier and destroys everybody all the time, you know? So, you can't just go out and spend a bunch of money, get a bunch of these crates... They're more so flavor. They're different weapons, different loadouts. Now, I know the community who's been playing long-term will probably argue with me on that one, but again, that's my impressions as someone who, uh, you know, spent some time in the Alpha and has now played maybe 10 or 12 hours over the past couple months, including everything happening with Javelin. It, it feels fine to me anyways. You know, it feels good. Um, and I do like the diversity and the variety that you get from playing a certain Merc for a while. You know, maybe you uh, go and you buy another Merc, and then it's like, okay, now I get these loadout cards, and I need a different primary, and I can have a cool melee weapon. I just think it adds a nice a nice uh, bit of variety to the game. Uh, all in all, 
Dirty Bomb deserves to be more popular than it currently is. It's just, it's another one of those examples of a really great shooter that doesn't cost a dime in this instance. That should have more players than it does. And everybody who's played it for, you know, a longer, a shorter period of time is going to have a different opinion on it. But the fact is, everything that the team's done while they were with Nexon and now that they've left Nexon and they're on their own over there has received, you know, overwhelmingly positive results. I mean, the Steam reviews are still very positive across the board and mostly positive. So even people who have been playing the game for hundreds and hundreds and thousands of hours are still enjoying it in a lot of aspects. So if you're looking for a good free-to-play shooter, which, by the way, also now has a full-fledged party system, so you can actually play with your friends effectively in quick play, which is fantastic, uh, download it and check it out, man. It doesn't cost a penny. You get some friends, get them to download it, and play some Dirty Bomb. I think it's a fantastic game. I don't know how many people at Splash Damage are like the original Splash Damage crew, but to see that name still making games all these years later, still providing me with the same sort of core gameplay that I came to love and enjoy and grow so addicted to in enemy territory way back when, that's kind of special. So yeah, you know, I might be a little bit biased uh, towards Dirty Bomb and towards the developer, but I still think it is well worth your time considering it's not going to cost you a penny. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're a longtime Dirty Bomb vet, I'd love to hear what you guys think about the new Javelin update, how you feel about some of the tweaks and... I know it's like early on, but I'd love to hear some of your first impressions. If you have any other questions about Dirty Bomb, before you go out and download it, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, remember to play smart, remember to play to challenge yourself, but most importantly, remember to play for fun.